pink theme today. So Joe and Roz right here. Oh, we <laughs> I have one uh, update for all of you at the top. A number of you have been asking for updates on the specifics of uh, the interagency team uh, that will be uh, traveling to Nigeria. Just as a reminder, uh, these individuals are complementing our country team that's already been on the ground, has been in close touch with Nigerian authorities from the beginning, uh, working hard to assess their needs. Uh, so uh, arriving today, uh, there will be seven uh, from AFRICOM. Uh, and one from state, uh, seven, uh, so that is a total of eight. An additional seven will be arriving tomorrow, uh, three from the FBI, three from the State Department, one from USAID. As we've been outlining uh, all along, uh, these individuals will be uh, complementing our team on the ground. They'll be working with authorities and local populations. Uh, they'll be providing technical and investigatory assistance, helping with hostage negotiations, advising on military planning and operations and assisting with uh, intelligence uh, and information. And obviously, as it needs are assessed, if there are needs for more, we'll, we'll continue to assess that. Uh, that's what I have at the top. Should we start with the ladies in the front? <laughs> yeah, well, we, 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 um, can we Go follow up, start with, with while, while you're on the subject? Sure. Um, today, um, President um, Jonathan said that the girls were still in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. um, U.S. intelligence is saying they probably have been split out and moved out of the country. Um, what, um, are you guys discussing this? Uh, have you got any more information as to where, those, where they could be? Um, and then um, to follow up on what you've just announced, um, what exactly is the strategy here? Is it, is it the idea to, to work with the Nigerians, build it up? Isn't that timely, uh, going to take some time to build up that capacity? Um, there, uh, the US is considering sending surveillance aircraft and stuff. When is, this, is that kind of decision going to be made? Is it only after a strategy is formulated? Um, um, or I'm just looking at timing of, of those kinds of decisions. Certainly. Uh, well, let me uh, answer your first question. Our assessment hasn't changed, but obviously these discussions are ongoing. And our priority uh, and the priority of the Nigerians is getting uh, the girls back uh, to their families. Uh, so we are, uh, those discussions are ongoing. Let me provide you just one more quick update. Uh, yesterday, um, our um, Ambassador Entwistle uh, met with President Goodluck Jonathan uh, on the margins of the World Economic Forum. They agreed on the importance of quick action on uh, uh, the UN designation of Boko Haram as a terrorist group. Um, they, uh, President Jonathan also affirmed his continued support for the multidisciplinary team. And assisting with the needs of the Nigerian government. Obviously, time is of the essence, and we're going to do everything we can to move this as quickly as possible. And uh, coordination meetings, internal coordination meetings, meetings with uh, officials in the Nigerian government are ongoing, and they will be over the course of the next couple of days. And so the Nigerians have asked for surveillance and possibly intelligence sharing um, a sensitive issue. Um, how seriously are you considering that? Well, obviously, uh, intel sharing will be part of what our team will be working together on. Beyond that, I'm not going to uh, outline further uh, the specifics beyond what we've, we've uh, said our team would be providing. There's been criticism um, in the last day or so that the U.S. Um, uh, the administration dragged its feet on um, uh, naming um, Boko Haram a, uh, a terrorist organization. Would that have changed anything um, as far as, as you're concerned as, you know, in preventing this kind of, of attack? Uh, well, let me first say uh, we designated three Boko Haram leaders, related individuals, uh, back in June of 2012, so under Secretary Clinton. Um, the, uh, designating groups or leaders is one key tool in our toolbox, but it's not the only one. And uh, I would point you to President Obama's speech he gave almost exactly a year ago, where he talked about the need for a holistic approach uh, to countering terrorism. Uh, that's what we're pursuing, what we've been pursuing with the Nigerians and international partners. Uh, we've been working to counter Boko Haram for many, many years, um, and designating 
uh, is one tool, but certainly uh, we've been long uh, we've long been working uh, on this effort uh, before the designation uh, in pa uh, last November. Can I just go back mm -hmm. to uh, Leslie's uh, initial question about: Do you believe that the girls are still in one group, or whether they've been split up? I don't have any other details to share uh, in terms of what the discussions are on the ground. And you're in, in contact with um, governments in neighboring countries where it's believed some of these girls might have been taken to? Uh, we have been. Our, uh, as I mentioned yesterday, I don't have any new updates, but uh, we've been in, in contact uh, through our embassies on the ground, yes. And do you have any reaction to the news this morning from Amnesty International that, um, in fact, the Nigerian army was warned about um, nearly, nearly five hours before the girls were snatched, that this was coming, and they just didn't have enough teams on the ground. I, I appreciate it's in northeastern Nigeria, but they just mm -hmm. didn't have enough people that they could muster to try and stop um, the raid happening. Is, is this a dereliction of the duty of the Nigerian authorities? Well, obviously, uh, given how horrific uh, this tragedy is of the uh, kidnapping of these girls, I, I think it's only natural that people are looking back and seeing what could have been done differently or what preparations could have been made. And as you know, we've been uh, working very closely with the Nigerian government for months, if not years, on increasing their capacity building and, uh, and ability to address um, these threats. Um, but um, again, I don't have any specific assessment from here, from the U.S. government, on, on uh, past reports. Following on Joe's uh, point, the government is uh, telling us that they had maybe two hours' notice. Is there, and I know that you just touched on this, but how can the U.S. help the Nigerians get their arms around a security situation that has been bedeviling them for years now? But in terms of what sort of capacity building can be done, is it just enough to have 50 Marines who have been training with the military? Is that enough? Do you see more uh, proactive approaches in terms of protecting other schools in the northern part of the country? Uh, well, Rose, without getting into too specific uh, level of detail, uh, part of our effort, um, including with this team, but also that's been ongoing, is to, uh, as you mentioned, increase the capacity of the Nigerian uh, government, uh, including helping Nigeria professionalize its military to counter threats like these. Uh, working on Nigerian law enforcement, uh, working with them, I should say, uh, Nigerian law enforcement so that they can better investigate and assist in hostage situations, preventing future hostage situations. Uh, we're also helping to provide, as you know, economic assistance to help with all of these areas. And, and our overall effort here is to help stem the threats of extremism from Boko Haram and other groups. Um, and certainly, uh, as we look at this tragedy, uh, working with the Nigerian government to do everything we can to prevent and the future is part of our effort as well. When you mentioned there's um, three State Department people flying out today and three mm -hmm. tomorrow, uh, which departments are they from within state? Uh, let me see if I have any greater level of detail um, on that specifically, Joe. Uh, we have a team leader um, who's going from our AF, AF Bureau who's going to help uh, assist in that front. We have. Um, some uh, communications uh, and midterm su response support uh, as well going. If there's more detail I can provide, uh, we're happy to send that around to all of you. Is the U.S. going to raise with the Nigerian government this amnesty report? We've been in very close contact with them, and there are a range of discussions going on. I'll, I'll check and see if there's more level of detail on that. Do we have more in Nigeria? Yeah. Go ahead. Are you, are you not considering, or, or and if not, why, um, like a team requesting a team of military special ops, like the folks hunt, hunting Conan? I think the Department of Defense has spoken to this, and I'd point you to their comments. Uh, that's not. Uh, we're providing a range of uh, a range of assistance on the ground, uh, with uh, as part of our interagency team. But that's not currently what we're discussing. Does the United States believe it'd be possible to get um, all the girls back, or some of the girls back? What, is there any indication yet that this is going to be possible? It's been, I mean, it's been three weeks and me going on four now. So. Uh, well, certainly, Joe. Obviously, it's challenging. And the Secretary answered a question on this when he did his Twitter town hall this morning. It's challenging. Time is of the essence. It's been, I think, 25 days now since these girls uh, were taken. We're going to do everything possible. Uh, but again, uh, given the circumstances, it's, it's tough. Um, and I don't want to make any predictions about the outcome. But what about, can I just ask also, there were eight other girls who were taken from a different part of northeastern Nigeria as well. Will your, um, at, on the, at the weekend, mm -hmm. will your uh, search extend to them? Are you going to try and bring everybody into this, um, this hunt? 
Uh, I'm happy to check on that level of specificity. Obviously, any uh, young girls who are taken in circumstances like these, our team would be working uh, in the capacity we can offer assistance with the government. So I'll see how expansive uh, this focus is. And I just wonder more broadly, mm -hmm. I mean, this is an issue where um, uh, I think girls, once they reach a certain age, 12 and above, and when, once they're considered to have been in puberty, mm -hmm. uh, are considered as, as marriageable in the culture mm -hmm. in, in parts of Nigeria. Um, I wonder more broadly what the United States can do to try and educate um, Nigerian society and society more broadly that these are still children, they're not mm -hmm. um, of the age of majority yet, and they should be given, girls uh, and boys should be given the opportunity to reach um, maturity, and, 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 and this idea of marriage as a child is actually one that's abhorrent to many countries in the West. Yeah, you, you are right. And this is another question that the Secretary answered this morning. I think, obviously, in his view, one of the things we can do is talk about and shine a light on uh, these uh, horrific um, and abhorrent acts that are happening around the world. And uh, we, as you know, uh, put out a report every year on uh, trafficking. Uh, we uh, do everything we can to raise concerns about um, child uh, trafficking, about child marriage, uh, about uh, many of these issues that we consider human rights abuses. Um, and uh, there really is no, uh, I think, silver lining we can look at uh, when it comes, well, we can, we should be pointing to when it comes to the tragedy in Nigeria. However, we are all talking about this right now. Um, news networks around the world are talking about this right now. And I think what people need to remember is that this isn't a new, uh, this is not a new, um, um, uh, unfortunate uh, occurrence. Uh, there are children who are uh, married around the world. There are who are married, I, I should say, against their will around the world. There are is trafficking that's happening around the world, and uh, we need to do everything we can to talk about it. Um, and I think that's something the secretary will continue to be focused on. Go ahead. Uh, sure, are we done on uh, Nigeria? Okay, go ahead. On on Pakistan, mm -hmm. I followed your question answer, answers yes from yesterday uh, on the killing of this Pakistani lawyer who was helping a blasphemy um, suspect. Uh, do you have something to say today? Uh, uh, and tell me again, do you know the name of the individual or? Uh, yeah, I, That's right. Mm -hmm. uh, we were deeply saddened by reports of the murder of Rashid uh, Raymond, an uh, attorney and human rights defender in Pakistan. He was representing a university a professor accused of blasphemy, and he had received death threats for his work. We encourage Pakistani authorities, as we have in similar cases in Pakistan and around the world, to swiftly investigate this crime and bring to justice those responsible. Uh, we continue to coordinate and cooperate closely with Pakistani authorities. Do you see any trend in religious increase in religious intolerance in Pakistan? Uh, obviously, as you know, we, we evaluate um, concerns along those lines on an annual basis uh, through our, uh, our annual report. Uh, I think that's going to be released in, uh, soon in the coming weeks, so I would, I would point you to that. And was this issue brought up by Deputy Secretary Burns when he met the top Pakistani leaders today in Islamabad? Well, as you know or you may have seen, um, we put out an extensive statement from Deputy Secretary Burns that outlined uh, his trip, uh, the issues that were discussed on his trip, and I would point you to the details included there. I've seen the statement. It also refers to that uh, he speaks about Pakistan taking efforts for counterterrorism measures and destroying, uh, eliminating safe havens in, in Pakistan, especially in the tribal regions. Uh, this kind of statement has been coming on for the last one decade, means 10, 12 years. What, what has changed in 12 years? The same statement is coming out again and again. Well, there are some of the same issues that we have been working with the government of Pakistan on. And uh, the secretary, as you know, has met with Prime Minister Sharif a range of times. They've discussed many of these same issues. Uh, these are issues where we have uh, share we have worked closely on uh, with the Pakistani government, where we may have shared concerns on, including uh, uh, counterterrorism efforts and, and cooperation on, on that front. So uh, it just indicates a continuing partnership with Pakistan and, and a commitment to, to working closely on these issues. Why do you think you have not been able to convince Pakistan on cross-border terrorism and uh, safe havens? Again, as was noted in Deputy, Burns's, Deputy Secretary Burns's uh, statement, um, this was an issue uh, that was discussed. 
Um, as he noted in his statement, countering cross-border militancy and shutting down safe havens is critical not only for Pakistan's long-term peace and prosperity, but also for positive relations between Pakistan and all of its neighbors, including Afghanistan. So we appreciate uh, the efforts, but obviously this is an issue we'll continue to work on. I have uh, one more. Uh, okay, go ahead. Yes, South Asia. Uh, you must have read news reports about the Sri Lankan national being arrested in southern Indian city of Chennai. Uh, he, the local police says that he was trying to trail some of the U.S. consulate officials in Chennai and and also trying to uh, look at some pro vacant properties in and around the consulate. Is this is there any security concern for the U.S. consulate in Chennai? Uh, well, we're aware of these reports. Um, as you know, there's a, an investigation happening by Indian authorities, so I would refer you to them. I don't have any further comment on it. Have you about it? I don't have any further update on it. Uh, sure, go ahead. Uh, um, uh, you've, you've seen that the Russian president is in uh, um, Crimea today. How do you view this? The NATO has called it inappropriate. What is the U.S. view? Our view is that this trip is provocative and unnecessary. Uh, Crimea belongs to Ukraine. Uh, and we don't recognize, uh, of course, uh, the illegal and illegitimate steps by Russia uh, in that regard. Is there any kind of, you know, given the, the um, escalating uh, tensions and um, s some fight and fighting in in, uh, in Ukraine and uh, around it, um, what are plans for? The, I think there was talk about getting together with on a a discussion next week in Europe on Ukraine. Anything further on that? Well, the Secretary will be in London next week, uh, meeting with the London 11 uh, to discuss the ongoing crisis in Syria. Uh, there are a number of members of the London 11 who certainly have uh, an interest in um, uh, what is happening in Ukraine, uh, and I'm certain that uh, there will be an opportunity uh, to discuss on the sidelines. Beyond that, there's no I don't have any additional announcements or, or plans to outline for you. So the Secretary spoke with Foreign Minister Lavrov today, and apparently Lavrov discussed or raised the possibility of having the U.S., Russia, the EU, and the OSCE come together to talk about how to resolve the crisis in Ukraine. One, can you confirm that such a phone call did take place? And two, if this idea was floated, where's Ukraine at the table? Well, um, the Secretary did speak with Foreign Minister Lavrov this morning. He also spoke with Prime Minister Yatsenyuk. Uh, in the phone call with Prime Minister Yatsenyuk, uh, they talked about um, continued uh, steps to support de-escalation. Uh, the Secretary, uh, er, uh, Prime Minister Yatsenyuk, provided an update on the security situation on the ground, uh, efforts to maintain calm and preparations for the election. Uh, during the call with Foreign Minister Lavrov, uh, they spoke about Ukraine. Uh, and ongoing efforts uh, to work uh, with the OSCE and others on the ground. Uh, they also spoke about Syria and uh, the process of removing chemical weapons uh, and the uh, remaining uh, work that needs to be done on that front. Uh, you know our view uh, on any proposal uh, of, of discussions, and that is that Ukraine would have to have a seat at the table. And uh, we are in discussions with uh, your, our European partners, with the Ukrainians, about the next step forward. And obviously, the Secretary spoke with uh, Foreign Minister Lavrov this morning about it, but um, I don't have any meetings or uh, planned meetings to announce. Did the Secretary tell uh, Lavrov the U.S.'s view that you just stated, that Putin's visit to Crimea was provocative and unnecessary? Did he put it that plainly to him? That wasn't a part of the discussion. They really were discussing uh, the situation uh, on the ground in terms of what steps uh, we need to take moving forward. And what about the, uh, the people in Donetsk and Luhansk who said that their referenda are going ahead regardless of what President Putin had to say? Uh, did that come up at all? Uh, what I read out is the focus of the meeting, but we can talk about uh, was the focus of the conversation. But uh, we can talk about other questions you have as it relates to Ukraine. Mm -hmm. yeah. A second call because they spoke yesterday by telephone. What prompted the the call today? They have been speaking every couple of days and pretty regularly throughout this crisis, so uh, it wasn't uh, anything other than uh, continued conversations. But at the moment, just to go back to the question that you were asked previously, there's no plans for the during the trip to London for a, uh, Foreign Minister Lavrov to come to London to meet with. Um, Secretary Kerry. Our, our plans are to go to London and have a meeting uh, on with the London 11 on Syria. Okay, and I just wondered if I could ask you um, if you were aware of reports that there's been 
uh, fighting between Ukrainian troops and, the, and these militias in the southeastern city of um, Mariupol, mm -hmm. in which 21 people apparently have been killed, which is seems to me a, a worrying escalation of the violence. Well, we condemn the outbreak of violence caused by pro-Russia separatists this morning in Mariupol, which has resulted in multiple deaths. Uh, we continue to call for groups who have jeopardized public order by taking up arms and seizing public buildings in violation of Ukrainian law to disarm and leave the buildings they have seized. Uh, so certainly we are aware of that. Uh, we're watching it uh, very closely. I would also say in relation to your other question, um, you know, we would welcome any steps uh, Russia uh, would be willing to take to defuse uh, tensions in accordance with its Geneva commitments. Uh, we've seen their words before. Uh, what we're waiting for is actions, and if this crisis is going to end, we need their words to be made real. Uh, so if they are serious about uh, what they're saying, uh, they need to tell separatists to lay down their arms, uh, to release those who are being held, um, and that obviously we have not seen happen. Yes, Syria? Uh, no, Ukraine? Ukraine? Go ahead. The two factors that they are, all the world is watching these days are the movement or the absence of the movement of uh, Russian uh, troops around the borders of mm -hmm. Ukraine. What's your understanding of, the, is there any withdrawal or shrinking in Nothing the number? Nothing has changed since yesterday. We have not seen uh, the movement that they spoke about. The other ago. factor, which is all the people or most of the people who are in the area are watching the referendum or the expected referendum on Sunday. Mm -hmm. What's your understanding or what's your observation of what's happening? Is it going to happen? And if it's happened, what you are going to do? Well, uh, as we've made clear, the referenda, it, re referendums are illegal under Ukrainian law. Uh, our view is that they're an attempt to create further division and disorder in the country. Uh, I'm not going to make a prediction of what will do. Obviously, we believe that uh, that these should not be held and they're not legitimate and we don't plan to recognize them. Our focus remains on the May 25th elections. Yes. Uh, the other thing which is this issue was raised in the hearing when Victoria Nuland was on the Hill and it was uh, mentioned that uh, or there were hints about the uh, possibility of more sanctions if this referendum took place, take place. I mean, I think I answered this the other day, but just to reiterate, obviously there are a range of factors we look at. We have a range of tools uh, because of the executive order. The, the executive orders, I should say, the president has signed. Um, and we're looking at a range of steps. Uh, we want Russia to take de-escalatory steps. Uh, we believe they uh, can influence uh, the actions of separatists on the ground. There's more they can do. Uh, and obviously, um, uh, President Putin's trip to Crimea is, is not in the direction uh, we're looking for. And uh, you mentioned in your previous answers that the target is the elections of to May 25th. Mm -hmm. uh, today we are 9th of May. I yep. mean, at least, at least there are two weeks. Mm -hmm. What's, what you are trying to do in these two weeks, beside the preparations of the, of the, of the, of the elections, are when you are saying there are meetings with EU and next week the possibility of discussing, what will be the target just for to, to reach to that point of 25th, 25th of May or what? Well, obviously there are a couple of tracks here. The elections and preparations for the elections are very much on track. I outlined some of the details on that just yesterday. Uh, and I mentioned, uh, just to give a quick summary, uh, the election monitoring agency, ODIR, has already deployed 100 long-term observers. Um, there are a number of organizations who will be observing the elections as well. Uh, the government of Ukraine has modified the presidential election a lot to allow domestic monitoring organizations to participate. We have provided a total of $11.4 million to support free and fair elections. So that's a process that's ongoing, and it's important to remember that uh, in most, the vast majority of, Muc of Ukraine, uh, things are calm on the ground. Uh, the Ukrainian government, as is evidenced by the Secretary's discussion with Prime Minister Yatsenyuk this morning, is doing everything possible to maintain that calm. Uh, separately from that, uh, clearly we want to see an end to the escalatory uh, acts uh, taken by the Russians. If there isn't, there will be consequences, or there will be continued consequences, and that's what the discussions are about. I mentioned yesterday, or somebody asked, I should say, yesterday about um, the proposed draft roadmap developed by 
uh, the OSCE chairman, OSCE's chairman in office. Uh, we're discussing now with the Ukrainian government, our European allies, and the OSCE. There are a range of ideas uh, from a range of parties that have been out there, but that's the focus of, of those discussions with our international partners. And if you may, uh, let me ask, uh, from the beginning of this crisis, there was the issue of supporting Ukraine. Mm -hmm. What's the latest with supporting Ukraine financially? Is still the flowing is on or, or just Absolutely. A We've provided a range of economic assistance, uh, a technical assistance, uh, assistance in terms of experts, um, and that's uh, been ongoing. Thanks. Okay. Syria, sure. Uh, news reports uh, have said that U.S., Britain, and France have raised suspicions at the U.N. yesterday of possible undeclared Syrian chemical agents. And diplomats have said that the three countries believe that Syrian President Bashar al-Assad never uh, came clean about the full extent of his chemical arsenal. Uh, to what extent do you, you are concerned about about this uh, issue? Well, Michelle, we have never uh, taken the Assad regime at its word, uh, and neither have those partners that you mentioned. Um, and we continue to approach this process with our eyes wide open. Uh, it's important to remember that the removal process is not the end of the OPCW's work. Uh, the OPCW's inspection and verification efforts will continue uh, to ensure the accuracy and completeness of Syria's declarations. Uh, that its CW production facilities are dismantled, uh, and that the entire CW program has been completely eliminated. And obviously, the OPCW will have our full support uh, in that ongoing effort. And the OPCW head of mission in Syria uh, has said that 92 percent of Syria's uh, chemical weapons have been removed or destroyed in the country so far. Mm -hmm. The remaining 8 percent is currently inaccessible uh, due to the security conditions, mentioning that they are in an area controlled by the opposition. Are you in contact with the opposition about, uh, about Well, this to be clear, and I think there was some confusion about the remarks made, um, the, there's only one area remaining where the uh, additional 8 percent is being held. It's not opposition controlled, it's regime controlled. There have been areas where, op where m chemicals have been removed from that have been opposition controlled. Mm -hmm. uh, our view, and I think uh, the UN representative said this in her comments, um, is that uh, we need to continue to look for ways to uh, get there regardless, um, that the regime has the responsibility to uh, remove these weapons. And we are, uh, while we regret that they uh, did not empty the final site when the environment was more secure than it is today, uh, we still continue to believe uh, we can and we're going to uh, do everything possible, at the OPCW I should say, to, to ensure the additional chemicals are removed. And why they are not delivered yet since they are under uh, the regime control? Uh, well, again, uh, obviously they were citing some concerns about security on the paths, but uh, we're going to look into that, uh, not us specifically, the OPCW, which we fully support. Um, and again, they said they're going to do everything possible to get there regardless. Assistant Secretary Gotch Mueller made the same point this morning about what's known as Site 2 or Salkyat. Mm -hmm. What can be done if these facilities and these tunnels have to be destroyed in order for Syria to be in compliance? with this agreement, what can the U.S. do to actually push this process along? Well, or, is this, or is it clear, or is this solely under OPCW control at this point? Well, the U.S. supports this effort, but as you know, it's not the U.S. that is running this process or the U.S. that has been uh, specifically uh, implementing it uh, throughout the process. So it is the OPCW with the support of the U.S. and the support of, of many other countries. Uh, we still continue uh, to believe that the Assad regime can and must uh, begin uh, to take uh, the necessary steps, including the packaging and destruction of, of certain materials on the site to demonstrate it is determined to fulfill its obligation. And again, I would point you to the comments of, um, of, uh, that were made uh, that made clear uh, that they're going to continue to look into every way possible to get access to the site. And how long is uh, the U.S., uh, as well as others, how long is the U.S. willing to wait for this destruction to actually take place, given that you believe that there are undeclared weapon stores across Syria? Well, we want it to happen as quickly as possible, but you're familiar with the deadlines, which is, uh, I believe, the next one is June 30th. Um, and again, let's not forget that um, we've now removed 92 percent of the 100 percent 
uh, of the declared. That is a significant step forward. Does more work need to be done? Yes, but these are chemical weapons that the Assad regime will never again be able to use uh, against their own people. Would the U.S. be willing to uh, just let the 92 percent uh, removed Again, I think stand? by saying we clearly need to continue our efforts to remove the uh, remaining weapons uh, answers that question. But yeah, but by okay. the delivery of the 8 percent, will you be confident that, that the whole arsenal, chemical arsenal? I think I answered that question when I said uh, we don't take the Assad regime at its word, and obviously the OPCW's efforts will be ongoing to ensure um, that they are, uh, that uh, the removal process uh, has, has uh, been verified in terms of the accuracy and, accuracy and completeness of, of the uh, declared stockpile. That means you will uh, ask for uh, uh, renewing the OPC. It's w not a renewing because as a part of what was agreed to last September, uh, that's included uh, as a part of that agreement. Well, given that this site apparently contains uh, precursors for both sarin and for VX, is there any particular urgency in getting this final facility cleared and then destroyed? Well, I think, or as I said, we want this to happen as quickly as possible, and the Assad regime needs to begin now to take uh, steps to uh, to assure the international community that they are remain committed to uh, their uh, fulfilling their obligation. Are you suggesting that uh, there might be uh, other chemicals and uh, other uh, agents across the country that could be combined with what is at site too? Is, I, does that I don't think I suggested that. I'm not going to any – what I conveyed, I think, Raz, a couple of times now is that uh, the OPCW's work will continue. We don't take the Assad regime's, uh, regime at its word, uh, and they will continue to take steps to ensure that, uh, that, um, uh, that the removal, uh, removal process and the inspection efforts are verified, uh, and they're verified to be accurate and complete, but their efforts will continue. Uh, sure. Do you have one more on Syria? Go ahead. Different subject. Different subject. Okay. Uh -huh. When you, you talk about the updating the stockpile list, uh, should OPCW uh, should seek the, for example, other chemical agents like chlorine to include to to the stockpile? I mean, what is the U.S. administration position on that? You you, you remember the debate? I've on this answered chlorine. this a number of times in the briefing room um, about chlorine, so I'd point you to past comments. Go ahead. The new topic. Yeah, um, sorry. Oh, sorry. Uh, Go ahead. Do you know if the secretary briefed Mr. Lavrov about his talks with Mr. Al Jarba, the head of the Syrian coalition? Uh, everything that I, I read out to you is the extent of the of the readout, so I don't have anything further to add. Go ahead. Um, I wanted to turn to a speech that was given by Ambassador Indig mm -hmm. last night at the Washington Institute. Mm -hmm. There were a couple of comments in there that struck me as interesting, apart from the fact that he actually seemed to put us into the negotiations a little bit more than we've heard. Um, so far over the last nine months. But I wanted to ask, he, he mentioned that he's, that Secretary Kerry believes that drawing up the borders of a future Palestinian state and agreeing to security arrangements uh, will be essential if these talks ever resume. Is, is that correct? Is he reflecting the correct position of the Secretary? Well, certainly uh, addressing and discussing in great detail and agreeing on uh, borders uh, and uh, what they will look like and security arrangements as part of what we've long said uh, is central to any final status agreement. Um, can you tell us how far you got in negotiations on doing this? I don't have any further details to outline on uh, on that uh, today. And he mentioned that um, he believed that one of the problems with, with the settlement was that um, it, uh, if it, he, he says that one day he fears a settlement movement could drive Israel into an irreversible binational reality. Mm -hmm. What did he mean by that? Well, I think uh, his words speak for themselves, but uh, if you, I think the, his view, as is as evidenced by his words, and uh, the Secretary's view is that if you care about Israel's future, uh, you should understand that uh, settlement activity, rampant settlement activity, especially in the midst of negotiations, doesn't just undermine Palestinian trust in the purpose of the negotiations, it also can undermine Israel's Jewish future. And well, what did he mean by the use of the word binational? Did he mean that there would be a state of Israel plus um, uh, territory belonging to Israel, which would be outside of Israel? Is that what he was trying to convey? I don't think I am going to detail it further uh, than what he conveyed last night. It just it doesn't really make much sense, the word binational. He used a word that... I will follow up with him and see if, there, if there's more to clarify on that specific word. Okay. Go um, ahead. Did, did Andrew Shapiro... Was he ever interviewed by the ARB regarding uh, Benghazi? 
Uh, as you know, there were dozens, uh, if not more, officials interviewed by the ARB, and we, uh, it was done by an independent, uh, independent leaders uh, where they had access to everybody they wanted to have access to. I don't have the list in front of me. We can follow up with that if you need that level yep, of detail. I'm would, sure it's public as well. It would be great if I could get a follow-up. And do you have any reaction to the, the creation of the select committee? I don't. I, I would point you to comments that have been made uh, by members on the Hill, and I don't have any uh, update uh, for all of you today. Can I sure. Um, actually, it's a question from um, our CNN colleague. Okay. Who can't be here. Okay. And, um, How kind of you. <laughs> <laughs> sure. So she wants to know um, whether you know anything about the drones found in South Korea. Um, the South says it came from the North, and it's concerning that they've penetrated the South. So. I do not have anything on that. Do you also know what's behind or, um, you know, the... the the um, North Korea State News Agency has fired of racist insults against Barack Obama. What's behind this? Have you any reaction to it? I have not seen that. Uh, obviously, uh, there's a long line of uh, outrageous comments that have come from North Korea and outrageous and threatening uh, rhetoric, um, but I have not uh, seen those specific uh, reports. Talking about the drones, the uh, foreign policy has uh, reported today that Iraqi government is actively seeking armed drones from the U.S. to combat Al-Qaeda in Ambar. Um, and uh, uh, it would welcome American military drone operators back in the country to target those militants. Are you in discussions with, uh, with the Iraqi about having uh, American troops going back to Iraq with the drones? We are, we've seen, of course, this report. It does not reflect uh, discussions we are having with the government of Iraq. Uh, we are not in discussion with the Iraqi government uh, about the use of, uh, unar of armed, unmanned aerial systems, nor are we considering such options. So uh, it sounds like uh, they need some better sources on uh, that one. Are you ready to discuss this option in case the government of Iraq uh, asked for? We're, we're not in discussion with it, so I'm not going to, about it, uh, and I'm not going to uh, predict a, uh, or answer a hypothetical. Is the U.S. discussing uh, the return of any uh, troops to Iraq? to help with its ongoing security challenges? You're familiar with uh, the steps we've taken. Uh, that's uh, what we're continuing to implement. Um, as you know, we remain uh, deeply concerned about the increased levels of violence in Iraq and the situation in Anbar. Uh, our, assist our assistance has not been limited to the security uh, sphere. We've worked on a consistent basis to develop a holistic approach um, and with a focus on recruiting local tribal fighters, ensuring res resources are reaching areas that need them. Uh, we also acknowledge that Iraq will not succeed unless its security forces are well supplied, trained, and equipped. And as you know, and here, because we've talked about it uh, a bit, um, we've also provided um, a distant, additional assistance, including the delivery of 300 Hellfire missiles, thousands of rounds of tank ammunition, helicopter uh, fired rockets, machine guns, grenades, flares, sniper rifles, M16s, and M4 rifles. Uh, we also delivered uh, additional uh, Bell IA-407 helicopters late last year and 10 Scan Eagle uh, surveillance platforms. So obviously our assistance is expansive. I don't have anything else uh, to predict for you about the future, but that's not something we're considering now. Has the U.S. expedited the uh, delivery of F-16 to Iraq? Uh, we have talked about that a little bit um, in here in the past. I don't think I have any additional specific update for you today. And I'd like to ask about the South China Sea again. Sure. Uh, I know that you were asked about this yesterday, but mm -hmm. the Vietnamese have released more photos that they say is evidence that the Chinese were the ones who indeed instigated the um, the clash that occurred last week. I wanted to know if the State Department has seen those photos and if you make anything of them. I think I've spoken pretty extensively to this uh, in our view, our concerns about uh, the provocative actions. I don't have anything new to add today. I, okay. Well, I did have one more follow-up. Okay, um, I don't think I have a comment on this, but the Chinese Foreign Ministry did have a rebuttal to what, something you said from the podium here um, a couple of days ago, essentially saying that the U.S. should butt out of this um, conflict because it doesn't specifically involve the U.S. I just wanted to make a comment on why the U.S. should not butt out. Well, uh, again, we don't take a position on the sovereignty. Uh, as you know, of these, uh, these are disputed waters, and obviously they have a difference of view on who, uh, who uh, has control over those waters or who has uh, ownership over those waters. So uh, I think we were speaking to, in response to a range of questions, uh, our concerns about 
um, um, you know, any time there are uh, provocative or unhelpful actions taken that uh, put uh, the maintenance of peace and stability at risk. And, and I think that's uh, something that uh, any country has uh, uh, the right to have concerns about. Thank you. The foreign ministry spokeswoman this morning um, said that she, the United States was, was making irresponsible statements on this and that um, you've ignored the facts and made a whole series of wrong m remarks. Well, I would stand by our statements we've made and uh, our views on this specific issue. Go ahead. Korean Foreign Minister visit to United Nations, New York now. Uh, mm -hmm. Is there any sig uh, significant count of uh, uh, resumption of six-party talks within this year or whatever time? Uh, we remain, nothing has changed about our view. We remain committed to credible negotiations to implement uh, the September uh, 20, uh, 2005 joint statement and bring North Korea into compliance. Uh, the ball remains in North Korea's court. Uh, North Korea must be the ones to first take meaningful actions toward denuclearization and refrain from provocations. Obviously, we haven't seen evidence of their willingness to do that. So what is the U.S. position of uh, resumption of six-party talks currently if, you know, even if uh, Chinese convincing to United States it come out, you know, six-party talks table? What is your real position? Do you think the six-party talks is really useful or productive or nothing Well, we else? remain uh, engaged uh, and work uh, closely with a range of partners in the six-party process uh, and across the uh, international community to urge North Korea to take concrete steps to enable the conditions that would facilitate a return to six-party negotiations uh, leading toward complete, verifiable, and irreversible denuclearization. But again, the ball is in North Korea's court. We have not seen them take uh, the necessary steps. All right, let's okay. just do a few more. Any Thank other you. topics? Yemen? Sure. Yemen today and uh, the fight between uh, the Yemeni army and uh, al-Qaeda. Uh, we strongly uh, condemn. I know there was also an assassination uh, attempt, so yeah. let me address that too. Uh, mm -hmm. We strongly condemn assassination and kidnapping attempts in Yemen, including today's attack by su suspected al-Qaeda militants on a convoy carrying the Minister of Defense and other Yemeni officials. At the same time, we commend uh, Yemen on its ongoing military offensive against al-Qaeda on the Arabian Peninsula. AQAP is a grave threat to both Yemeni and American security, and the U.S. government welcomes the actions of Yemen's brave forces to counter this group. Uh, we continue to support the Yemeni government, military, and people in their efforts to counter violent extremism and terrorism and commend uh, the president and the Yemeni government's progress against threats of this nature. What kind of support uh, are you providing? Uh, we've provided a range of support. I don't have that in front of me. I'm sure we can get back to you with some specifics. Go ahead, Lauren. China. Okay. Have you seen this news report? A senior Chinese official uh, uh, quote, being quoted as saying that China is planning to build a railroad of more than 8,000 miles which could cross China, Russia, Alaska, through the Pacific to the U.S.? I have not seen that report, no. Uh, okay. We can check on it for you. I'm happy Fine. to. Thank you. Interesting. Right. Thank you, everyone. Have a great weekend.